let's say you were about to die. And you had to send a message to somebody. And there were, because you were going to die, there's going to be no repercussions. They're not going to hate you. They're not going to come at you. They're not going to take your stuff. You just, you, you're just about to die. And so you get to speak the truth in a way that is very different than you would. That if you weren't going to die. I think when people are about to die, that's when they speak their ultimate truths. And I think most people on their deathbed, they go, I wish I had loved more. I wish I had done this more. It's, it's like just before you're about to die is when you really realize the truth of your own life. And I think humans, as we are, we plod along and we, we, we have this life, but we don't really... At some point, you reach a, a point where your dreams or your imaginations or your goals or something where you thought you could do something and you realize that you can't or that you won't or that, or that you're not going to do it. And I find with myself, I've, I've, I've been always dreaming of a plan to transform this world I'm in. And I've called it the very secret plan. And I, I, I've been working on this idea or a story for a long time, like over 25 years. And when you reach that point, because <laughs> sometimes it's a story, sometimes it's a plan, and sometimes it's it's reality. Sometimes you're you're in the middle of it. And uh, excuse me, just pull my nose. It's like that. It's, it's, it's like editing. You know, what do we edit? Take out the sneeze. Take out what we don't like. Make things right. Make things good. We have the real world and we have the edited world. We have life as it is and then we have the news reporting on what is occurring. The human beings are always are lost in distinguishing between these two things. You know, what is actually happening and then how is it being interpreted by everybody else? And then we have these mechanisms in place to transform or change how we see things or how we understand things. And I find that, I think I'm 57 and uh, I didn't think I would live past 30 for some reason and then I didn't couldn't quite understand why but I had this feeling I was going to die at the age of 30 I don't know why I had that but now I'm 57 and it wasn't true I thought I was going to die but I didn't there's a lot of things I thought would happen that didn't happen there's a lot of things I wanted to happen and it didn't happen a lot of things I aimed at dreamed of and I experienced it, but it wasn't what I thought would happen. And I, I, I don't think I'm any different from you. We're all like that, right? Like there's certain things about human beings we're the same, two legs, two arms, two eyes. And we experience life very differently. And then as you get older, as you become an elder, you realize that, hmm, some of the things I thought were this way, they're not true. Some of the things which I thought the world, it, is, it, it isn't true. And so you, you go through life, you go through these experiences and you're always kind of assessing and, and, and then you're portraying yourself to everybody around you. And there's this inner world nobody sees and there's this outer world which you project. Most spiritual traditions are, are telling you about this relationship between your inner world, everything that 
nobody can see in the outer world of what everyone sees. And this is part of being a human being. We have an inner world and there's this outer world. And now we have backgrounds. Now we have a way of changing our perception through this technology. And you may be wondering what point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to be honest. And I'm really trying to be honest because I, I see in the media and I see people talking and I just don't see people being really honest about their life and who they are because we're always trying to make people believe things we want people to believe that we're a good person we want people to believe that our product is right for them we want people to believe in whatever and that belief is in your inner world that belief is something that doesn't necessarily correspond to reality you can believe something, doesn't mean it's true. I think when we come down to believing about something like God, that's where human beings have a big separation around what God is. And all of our religions and all of our spiritualities and everything that exists for people that creates this worldview that we live in centers around our belief in God. And I don't know about you. I mean, I've had experiences, but I have to say they're drug induced, psychedelic induced, DMT induced. There's something that occurs and all of a sudden, boom, you have this or I have had a God consciousness experience where all of a sudden you go, oh my God, what they said was true. But it blasts away everything you ever thought about, anything. And then it fades away. And that's very different from reading about God in books. It's very different from reading about things versus experiencing things. And so I've had some experiences where, where it seemed like every molecule in my awareness, everything around me was looking at me. Everything had consciousness. Everything was a lot, everything. <laughs> and it was in that moment where you're going, oh, oh, it's not just me. There's everything else. And there's something, there's intelligence, there's awareness, there's something bigger here. And that's what, you know, people like Buddha or Jesus or anyone who started a major religion has had some experience and then they bring forth teachings and then they're going around saying, this is a different world. And just, if you could have this world then you could be like me and then everything's going to be great or whatever that is, right? But now... We're at the point of our human evolution where all of us have that chance of experience. I mean, if you go to a festival and have some DNT and bing, <laughs> and believe me, you are not going to be the same. So, what do you do with that? And I think for me, you know, I've I've been trying to trying to understand you know, how to utilize my life with the most that I can. And, and the spiritual side has been so strong, but it's, it's not that strong. I look at other people and they meditate better and they pray better and they're, they're way more devout and they're way more aware. And I feel deep down that I'm just, I'm just this speck of sand you know, on a beach, on a planet in the middle of nowhere, and I'm aware of myself, but who gives a flying frick about that, right? Like, life goes on and that's it. 
and as human beings, we want some some significance. We want to believe that I am the one, or I figured it out, or and I, you know, I have moments where I might have figured out a little something, but then it fades. But then you, you look at the world, and you're going, you know, I just think we could do things better. Why are things organized this way? And why, why are those people in charge? And why, why are they just being so stupid in relationship to the planet? And I, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people out there who are sort of thinking the same thing as me, that we've, we've reached an age of, we're gonna die soon and we're leaving this planet to these children that are that have no idea about what has happened because you probably realize there's a lot of lying there's a lot of people people and nations and bloodlines are all trying to cover their tracks to to sort of hide the horrible things that we've done to each other because when, whenever a war comes in you know, just horrible, horrible things have been done from one group to another group. And humans have been fighting and killing each other for thousands of years. But now, for the first time, we have this. I can speak into a computer and then there's a chance it can go to the whole world. <laughs> With my luck, you know, maybe five people will watch this, but doesn't really matter it just means that we've come to a point in our species evolution where everyone has the ability to speak their truth to the world now the whole world isn't going to hear that but the the whole you can speak your truth to your community and that's that's so different if you think about 50 years ago before the internet this did not exist. This was impossible. So I think that's freaking amazing. But I, I know I got to make a point here. I, I'm trying to get to a point of saying that I think we can design the future in a way where we get what we want if we just focus on being loving and peaceful and we don't sort of take it in, we're, we're not thinking about orbital batteries and, and 5G control mechanisms. Like the, there really is a battle right now for the minds and wills of the people. And I don't know if I'm trying to make a point or not. I just think that I've spent a lot of time designing systems and with the hope that we can build something that actually helps our whole species to get ahead. And I'm looking for people who believe the same thing and want to work on the same thing. And I, and I want to work with you. And I've, whatever I've created, I think at some point I want to give to you. I, I, this whole thing about money and profit and, you know, I, I'd much rather, you know, die in poverty, knowing that whatever I created was available to everybody rather than become very rich and only a few got it. And I think what I've created is very valuable. It's a, it's a thinking system. It's a way of organizing your mind so that it makes sense of where things go. And I think when you put language on sacred geometry, it changes how you think and it, it opens up the multidimensionality of our interaction with the universe. And I, I would just like us as human beings to be peaceful when we go out and start to connect with other civilizations and entities and beings and we have to see ourselves as a world
that is about to make contact with other, other species. And I just think it's a better idea to do it in a peaceful way than a warring way. And so we got to take care of our own. We have to figure out how to feed everybody. And it can be done. All the technology is there for everyone to have a, a decent life. Bare, you know, just basic, you know, everyone needs a house, food, work. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty basic. And if we all have that in our hearts and our minds as, as what we want to create together, I think we will do it together but we just have to leave this war mentality. Anyway, maybe someone will see this after I'm dead. Maybe, maybe it'll do some good, who knows.